Okay, welcome back to uh, Real Analysis. Uh, if you uh, have been following along, we've we just introduced the concept of compact sets last time, and we're doing a series of lectures on compactness uh, to give you uh, uh, try to give you a sense of why this is such an important concept, but also um, give you a, a feeling for what compact sets are. Okay, uh, and. So today what I would like to do is talk about the relationship between compact sets and closed sets. Last time we saw that compact sets are, in some sense, small sets, right? They're the next best thing to being finite. finite. Okay. So in particular, finite sets are compact. We also saw that compact sets are, uh, in fact, bounded sets. That's what we proved last time. And what I want to show you today is that, in fact, compact sets are closed sets as well. But you'd all, we're also going to see some other relationships between closed sets and compact sets. Okay. So uh, that's the plan. And I, uh, I want to just remind ourselves what a compact set is. So what does it mean for a set to be compact? A set is compact if... If every open cover of that set has a finite subcover, and usually we're talking about uh, a set that's uh, in some big metric space, so a set K in a metric space, let's say X, uh, is compact if uh, every open cover of K, where? In X, has a finite subcover. Where? Yeah, in X, has a finite subcover. Now, um, what I want to show you to start off with is something I alluded to at the end of last time. That is, it really doesn't matter what space you're embedded in. That is, compactness is actually an intrinsic property of a set, uh, and it is is not actually uh, doesn't actually depend on the metric space you're embedded in. Okay, and so that's the first thing I want to uh, to um, to do for us. So let me have you uh, also recall. So this is the definition of compactness. But I also want you to recall um, what characterization we have for what it means to be open in a big sp uh, in a metric space. So imagine having a metric space, let's say x, and then maybe some smaller metric space y. Uh, and uh, we might ask, what does it mean to be open in x? Well, what does it mean for a set to be open? It means every point is a interior point. Or another way to say it is, Every point can be perturbed a little bit and still say, stay inside the set. That's what it means for the set to be open, right? OK, but uh, last time we made a distinction then about what it means for a set to be open in x versus open in y. You could imagine, for instance, a set like this, which doesn't contain its boundary here, but does contain all the points on the boundary here. What does it mean for this set? If, uh, is this set open in x? No, it's not open in x because you could be right on the boundary here and perturb a little bit and you'd leave, right? There is a, there's not, this point is not interior. There, uh, it has, there is no open ball neighborhood around this point that's still within x. Agreed? But is this set open in y? Yes, because, okay, well, here it's clearly open. You can perturb a little bit. But here, in Y, if you perturb it a little bit, would you still remain within Y if you only move within Y? Yes. Okay. Harris. Oh, yeah. So I'm leaving these out in this particular example. But if these points, very good question. If these points were actually in the set, then this set would not be open in Y either, because you could march 
to the northwest uh, direction here and leave the set. Okay, this, this point would not be interior if it were included. Okay, everybody with me? So this example here is an example of a set that is, in fact, open in Y. It's not open in X. But there is a relationship, as we saw last time. So the other thing we proved at the end of last time was we said, well, even if this set E is not open in X, if it's open in Y, it has, it has a corresponding set that is open in X that's related to it. How? Just by doing what? Well, I claim that there's some other set that is open in X for which this is the intersection with Y. So that was the theorem from last time. We could call this set G if you wanted, which is the entire um, thing on both sides here. So the theorem we proved at the very end of last time was if you have E, which is a subset of Y, which is a subset of X, then E is open in Y uh, if and only if what? E is actually the smaller metric space intersected with some set G for some open G for some g open in x. So this is the correspondence between being uh, open in a subset, uh, a, a metric space that's a subset of a bigger metric space. Okay, Any open set over here corresponds to one over here. It could correspond to several, but it corresponds to at least one. right? And any set over, over here corresponds to one over here just by taking the restriction to y. Okay, That's what we showed at the end of last time. And uh, this insight is uh, going to be the important ingredient in showing that compactness is really not dependent on the space you're in. If I want to talk about this set E being compact, whether or not I choose to talk about uh, Compactness in Y or compactness in X, it's the same. Okay? Let's see why that's true. I claim you, you actually already know enough to see why that's true. Now, of course, um, what we're really going to have here is some set K. You know, you might, for instance, imagine some set K here. And I might want to know is this set considered compact? And so now the question is. What does it mean for it to be compact? I need to show that every open cover has a finite subcover. And if I want to talk about compactness in Y, then it better be an open cover in Y. Oh, so then I'd use what kinds of sets? Purple sets or yellow sets? Yellow sets to cover this creature. And I want to, I, I want to know, is it true that uh, if it's compact here, is there some relationship between being compact in X, which would involve covering by purple sets? Okay. In fact, the theorem that we're about to prove says, in fact, the, the notions are equivalent. So if Y is, let's say Y is, is contained in X, they're both metric spaces, then the claim is K compact in Y is equivalent to being compact in X. And so you can always just stop talking about which metric space you're in. Okay, let's try to prove this. 